Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to uh, OTA audience from all over the world. Uh, welcome to our monthly online sharing events. Um, today's topic, we are um, going with uh, Mark Ho, uh, Ho Guangyan. Uh, hear him talk about his journey from a PhD in USA, and luckily he landed a job in, um, in Virginia, Department of Transportation now. Um, that he will in this presentation he will share like how he get to where he is right now and most importantly he will share how to get visa sponsor because it's very important information to all of us uh, as immigrant engineers we we want to stay in the u.s um the cr most critical part is to get us get a visa get a working visa um so guang yuan uh, graduate from uh, university and before coming to U.S., he has six years of experience in Taiwan. I believe this experience is helped him land a PhD uh, admission in U.S. and later helped him get an offer from the Department of Transportation. Okay, so uh, without further ado, um, let's hand the microphone to Guang Yuan. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, for introducing me. Hello, everyone. I'm Guang Yuan Ho, and uh, today I want to share my uh, job hunting present uh, preparation and the working experience in state DOT with my uh, PhD degree. Okay, so here's my outline. I will introduce my back, my personal background a little bit, and I will divide my uh, uh, job hunting preparation into uh, in PhD early stage and uh, when uh, close to the graduation, what we need to do and it's, it's helpful for us to find a job here. Then I also want to emphasize the importance of networking, especially uh, the help from OTEA on me. I really appreciate that. I also want to share the working experience in VIDA and to share some uh, uh, visa sponsorship topic here in the job market. And we, I, I'm glad to share the uh, in the recent year, the, what's the job market in the United States with, with you. And then finally, it's the conclusion to my QA. Okay, so it's uh, I will clarify. I, I uh, okay, I, I graduated from uh, National Chenggong University in Taiwan with a civil engineering bachelor degree in 2013, and uh, uh, I started to uh, study abroad in University of Florida in 2016 for one semester, and then I transferred to University of Maryland in College Park. Then uh, after one year, I get my master's degree and continue to my PhD program since 2017. And uh, after about five years, six years, I got my uh, structures PhD degree uh, from Maryland. So uh, I, uh, the, the previous uh, best talk about my, pre my six year working experience is during my PhD uh, program since I am a research assistant. So I have like half time uh, doing research work and have time study. So it's what she talked about my previous six year working experience. And now I start to work in Virginia DLT in 2023. Okay. So yeah, here's the six year research assistant experience in the Bridge Engineering Software Technology Center. We call Best Center uh, is in civil engineering uh, in Maryland. And uh, we got a uh, we are a research center in the civil engineering, and uh, we 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 get a project from the Maryland Department of Transportation. So I did a full uh, DOT research project uh, during my PhD program, and we we provide the technical support for their structure and the geonet uh, geotechnical analysis. We also develop the programs for their structure design and the uh, code verification. And now my current. Uh, Status is a bridge structure engineer. And hold on, what's the sound? Okay. Sorry, I hear the notification sound here. Okay. Let me, and uh, I'm a bridge and structure engineer. And my, 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 my work is to do the inspection and the low rate, bridge low rating here. So I try to, uh, uh, introduce, go back to the previous slides to introduce a little bit of story. Uh, I transferred from the University of Florida and uh, to, for, to Maryland. So here's a, uh, the story is speaking with my, I got a dual uh, master, de master program um, from University of Florida and uh, Maryland. So first of all, I, I choose to go to the 
Florida land, but I think uh, Maryland probably uh, is another good option. So during my spring break, I uh, went to the uh, DC to have to trip. Then I tried to count, I just uh, joined the Maryland, the Taiwanese Student Association that's uh, online, like the face, Facebook group, and asked, hey, is any uh, uh, alumni or students study from the civil engineering in Maryland? I tried to reach out. I also uh, write an email to contact the professor. Some professor replies me, but I met my my previous my advisor because the one uh, my other night she 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 uh, told me to I I have a lunch I had lunch with her and she and discuss my research interests and she said oh you probably might uh, fit our uh, advisors uh, research interests. Uh, it's related to the bridge inspection and design. So, okay, it's probably a good, good chance. So she brought me, I met, I met her just first few hours and she took me to meet my advisors. Then I talked with my advisor, okay, probably my interest, uh, research interest and what he can provide and what his current work. Okay, in, it's, a, it's, it's not in my it's an expect, expectation, but yeah, and, and finally he um, he's willing to uh, take me to join his lab, so that's why how is how my uh, PhD program start with uh, just a, a lunch. Start with a lunch, yes. Okay, so I would like to sh uh, share the experience when I prepare how to prepare in a PhD early stage. So uh, when I start with the PhD program, a lot of the PhD or PhD student told me, "Hey, you need to determine your career path as early as possible." So probably there are two ways to choose is a uh, research or go to industry. And uh, another another issue is you want, you want to stay in the United States or you will probably want to come back to Taiwan. So it, it kind of a matrix. So uh, for my experience, so if we want to go uh, power the research, you need to do uh, attend um, a conference, you have a publication, but if you want to go to industry, you have it's better to have an internship and to learn this uh, uh, commercial software and to learn some skills to help you uh, get ready to, uh, to work. Yes, and uh, also another issue is that to, we have to consider the sponsorship and the immigration steps if we, if we want to stay in the United States. So, like the PhD, PhD student, you probably need to apply the green card as possible as, as you can, like in other way to get a visa to the green card is you have to uh, get a H1 working visa then the employer will help you to get a green card. So and then when you start with a PhD program it's better to start networking no, no, no matter either you want to go to e research or the industry networking will help you a lot. Then another thing is to build your reputation to try to uh, make people know you and uh, to be nice and to help people as possible if you can. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, so for PhD, for PhD, PhD student, uh, there are some pros and cons. So pros is you may have uh, sufficient time, like four years, probably more, then you have time to uh, to find your way, and uh, probably you have a funding support, so help you to stay studying here, and you have time to you have time and fun funding to help you to uh, explore your career path. The cons probably like uh, you have to. Do the research, or you have to uh, teaching work like who uh, uh, consume your time to focus on uh, on your final goal. In other things, you have to, some um, lots of PhD programs require your publication, so you spend also spend the time on the publications. Okay. So another the next step when I uh, close to the graduation. So I think the first step is to determine your graduation timeline because for a PhD student, uh, we can probably have, uh, we can control when we can graduate. So we have to talk with your advisor then uh, if you, your advisor has a funding can support you after graduation, that should be pretty good. Then um, you have to start with your practical training we call OPT. Yeah, it's important to, to start. You can probably like, uh, you can find a job and you make all almost done. Then you you say talk to your go back to your device professor. Say hey, can I graduate in what time? And I read already to uh, uh, apply my OPT to make to make it legally work in the United States. So it's really important because unlike a master student, master student should graduate follow the schedule of the school the, the calendar. 
So, so PhD student first, you have to um, de determine when you want to graduate. Then uh, make uh, the resume and the cover letter ready to up to apply the, the positions. And uh, if you if you have time, you can study like the EIT or PE to get the license. Or you want to do a research, you have it's better to publish your journals because you you need a, a school resource to help you. So. It's better to complete them before your graduation. Enhance the networking. So it's really important to you have to let your your friend or someone help can help you know. Hey, I I probably graduated right now, and if you have any chance, be, in, let me know. You need a referral and the interview request, or someone to can share their resource to you to help you, and uh, create a job list to uh, record. Uh, what's your goal and what company you probably can apply and make a spreadsheet to uh, write down and to make it uh, really run like a system. Then in the school, they have a career fair probably a few times each semester. So yeah, go to a career fair. Probably, uh, I, I won't say it's a, it's, a, it's a really good chance to, to get an uh, interview or get a job from the job career fair, but it's helped us to understand what, what's the current Job market, and lots of company probably need a, uh, cannot provide a sponsorship, and uh, what kind of job uh, company can they can provide some uh, sponsorship, and uh, what's their uh, um, benefit, and to talk and encourage yourself to talk with the uh, recruitment the hiring hiring person. They can share and uh, help you to make sure you can uh, talk with them easily. Yeah, it's a another good. In person, face to face talk, it helps you to uh, like a kind of practice. Yeah, and the final thing is to practice your interview, practice everything, practice, practice, and practice. So I can share what I um, do when I uh, near graduation. So I started to prepare my resume and or CV cover letter about three to six months before graduation. And I, I feel like it's a, it's not just like a, the the homework the assignment you you do complete in one weekend is because uh you can have you can have your friends or your other night someone like OT, ot yellow mentors help help you to review your resume so it's like back and forth back and forth you have uh conclude uh, uh their suggestion put them together and then make your cv is really um uh good to submit to apply then i it's, it's for me. I feel like it's kind of late, but I passed my EIT. We also call it a fundamental engineering test FE after graduation about one month. So if you can get a EIT earlier, then you submit your resume. Hey, you can get an EIT as early as possible. Then it's it's pretty good. Important is to enhance the, your networking. You have to uh, let people know. Hey, I need a. Um, if you you know any. Uh, possible any chance or any interview, any uh, job opening information, please uh, let me know. So um, I got uh, eight interviews uh, for, uh, from the referral. It's a lot, and uh, some of them from the OTA. So I really appreciate the the, the, uh, the OTA's help. And uh, I also can share some experience for my uh, interview in government job and on the compared to the consulting firm. So I have uh, two uh, interview from the government. Including one my current position, I feel like the government job they have like really standard interview. They have like the exam, like like an oral exam. They have like a the question like 10, 20 uh, questions to to talk about what's your what's your view point of view, what you learned before, and if you face some question face some uh, familiar, what what you you plan to do, what's your think, what's your thought. So it's really like the exam, and you have to add, uh, to answer the question as complete as possible. And it's like like the five or three questions, like the personal or, or uh, social skills. Say, hey, if you face some, how to uh, talk with your, how to work with your coworker, and if you have different style, what to how to communicate. It's like the few like three to five questions about that. But for the consulting firm, they their interview they are interesting in uh, what. Project, what previous experience you have, what project you do, what, ski, uh, what skills, what software you, you can use, and, uh, and what's your level. And they also want to know uh, uh, when you can start work and, and what's your pay. So it, it, it's a lot 
kind of different, but and uh, yeah, so they, they, they try to become the colleague co worker with you, so it's not like the exam, the dissertation, not like that. Okay, and uh, next, I will try to to emphasize what I feel the importance of networking in the left side. As I, as, um, has ever, anyone played uh, like the Edge of Empire is a video computer game. When, when we play a computer game, we have uh, the map, the view. So I feel like uh, my career view when I in the school, I feel like just really tiny scope. I just know the, what happened around me. But when I join, after I join the OT, I have a, uh, joined a, several meetings. I know which position, what happened they do, what project they do, and what's their career path, 10 years and 20 years, I probably can get more information for my career, uh, have the pattern to can follow them. So um, I feel it's first, it's really important to uh, to join OTA to help some, someone can share their past 10 to 20 or 30 years work uh, career path to, to you. Someone, something you can take and probably you can uh, be aware of that. Another thing is the networking. So I will feel like we we never know who will who will meet. So it's a theory. It's like sixteen people. We have like one hundred twenty relationships. I know I was like to share the uh, just a little story. So it's a uh, two years ago. I went to uh, I have an alumni uh, event in the Chicago, and then but because because I'm a uh, baseball fan, so I drive for like two hours to the uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, probably near in. Wisconsin to watch a baseball player who, who name is Yang Dai Gang, just to watch him. And the, here is, is kind of not really popular. It's not a big city, so there's all people looks from the local. But I, I found the two people they looks like Asian 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 face. So I talk I tried I actively to talk to them. Hey, do you hey are you from Taiwan to here for to root for the Yang Dai Gang? They say, Oh yes. So I have a, a good talk with them. Then I still keep talking and try to they didn't know, hey, I, I'm graduate now and uh, I'm my major is civil engineering. Do you know someone? Probably the possible. I'm not I'm open to to move to in the United States to, to have work. And after we're talking about we we found that like, we found like we have a mutual friend, it's Jadin in OT years. So hey, well, do you know Jadin? Oh, oh my God, what a small world. So it, it's hard to it's, it's, you know, so we, we don't know, we never know who will meet. Yeah. And I I also met Jadin in 2017 or 2018, he has a meeting in DC and he's my uh, roommate mentor. So I have a short talk with him. So I, yeah, so we, we, we never know someone can help us and someone can uh, share their uh, resource with us. So just be nice and the build reputation and uh, to, uh, and we never know the how magic networking it is. And okay, I have about five minutes. And I also want to share my, uh, working working experience in my current work experience. Honestly, I'm not a lot of working because for just one year. So from this teacher will say, hey, could PhD work in the industry could be like, you know, the big bird is really weird. Could, could be or not could be. So yeah, so I try to make our um, comfortable to work and try to learn here. So I will always talk with my colleagues say, hey, because my previous experience is doing research, uh, but I never do a really practical experience. And so I want to get a more uh, practical experience and to, to feel to how the industry run the project and what their routine job to do. Yes, it's all, it, made me, it makes me uh, feel um, comfortable to join them here. So in my working with we, for civil engineer, I, I guess lots of civil engineer has no matter which what background you have, but you have to follow the really fundamental to follow the the code. It, for me, the edge code, design code, the manual for bridge evaluation, inspection, then the our state uh, policy. We need to follow that. My current work is to do the low rating for the extinct bridge, including the bridge and the covers. We have to evaluate the low capacity of the bridge, so we have we have follow the. Uh, Edge to call to run the model to run the capacity of a current bridge, and then we have information from the inspection. We have an inspector in the field and write down the paper to us, and we we will uh, modify 
we have to model simulation what's the session loss what's the damage of this bridge right now then we run the live flow analysis and uh, we have lot, lots of truck and uh, we we try to make sure that all bridge can can is good for all trucks but some really old bridge you need cannot um take the heavy truck so we need to post make a post in the right side we need to post the ton of the trucks how many axles they have and how heavy they can carry so like here sorry i, I cannot share the uh, internal information from my, my department but i can share uh, some uh public information here so in here it's just the uh, one 109 years old trust bridge in our district and it's permanently closed so we need to de determine hey it's a uh, previously it's just these three counts limitations but now we found some um critical members doesn't damage so we have to decide to close this bridge but we, we, it's, it's it's kind of the struggle because uh, dilemma because when we close the bridge this uh local district the resident they will yeah like we call it their inconvenient so they will complain so we have to make our reason stronger to to let, let them know why we need to, to close this bridge because we found something we inspect for a while and we also talk to the design section so hey you probably you need to design a new bridge for this area this to cross this uh board here yeah then i also can uh probably someone maybe in, more interesting about the uh, my current uh, uh, is in the V dot. The V dot is Virginia Department of Transportation. Uh, it's a state government. So in V dot, we have the one central office in the Richmond and other eight uh, district office. And I work in the district office. And I also want to share the really kind of insight, but no, 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 no secret. So V, v dot is willing, willing to uh, sponsor, unlike other uh, state department uh, DOT, because Probably in the in this area, I just probably just know Vida is willing to sponsor. And what's the benefit in Vida? Because uh, Vida is a nonprofit organization, so they can sponsor CAP exam, H one B visa, which means uh, we don't need to get a lottery every annual. We need to lots of people need to get a lottery to to get an H one H one B working visa. So, but we don't need uh, need to lottery. We can apply H one visa as as, uh, when we need just need it so i think i feel like it's really a uh, friendly um working visa application because someone we need to we, we never know i heard someone to feel times more than several times to run to get a uh, working visa lottery after they run off their um uh, practical training period three years so they need to go to the day one cpt to keep them stay in the united states so i, I feel okay it's pretty pretty nice i don't want to take a risk to go to the working visa lottery. Then the visa, uh, visa also can sponsor the, the green car. So yeah, if you are interested in the, the whole process, because I just am in the middle of that, we, we can talk, just text me or we can talk privately here. OK. So uh, OK. Here is a, my conclusion is pretty simple. So uh, prepare as early as possible, and we, you have once you get out, you have more time to prepare, to determine, to and even think which way you want to go. So start as early as possible. Then keep networking no matter which stage you are. Just you want to stay here, you need someone to help, yeah, start to networking. The other thing is you have to build your reputation because I feel like in the United States, your reputation is it matters. So build build your build a reputation here. Then and explore the activity to try every chance and don't don't say no to any chance just try your best to if you want to survive here as an immigrant just do your best and don't say no to any chance yeah and yeah and that's it so and thank you for your patience here and if you have any question just feel free to to let me know okay okay thank you yeah thanks Guangyuan. uh we got one um <clears throat> audience Kenneth, he raised his hand. So Kenneth, please put your questions to Huang Yuan. Oh, uh, my question is, as I know, the H-1B working, uh, non-profit working visa, it will ex expire immediately when you left the company. Is it correct? I mean, it cannot transfer for the profit. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah. So if you want to change your job, you need a, uh, another nonprofit organization to they can accept your having uh, same working visa. Yes. And but be, if you want to really want to t change the job from nonprofit to a private company, the consulting firm, you probably can let the consulting firm the unit probably you potential go to the uh, this company. They can hey, can you do the H one visa? Can you help me to get a lottery first? Once they can, they got a. I'm not. I'm not pretty sure. I'm not quite sure because I'm not not willing to leave right now. So, so they they probably can get a lottery for you once they can get the lottery to ensure uh, they have the the opening H one opening for you, then you can move. Yeah. But under the H one nonprofit H one B nonprofit visa, you still can apply for the good yeah. card. Okay. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Guang Yan, we got another audience. Uh, Ji Sun Zhen, raise his hand. Ji Sun. Hi, uh, hi, Dr. Ho. Um, hey, I know you. you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great to see you. Uh, I think we haven't met for 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 10 years. Good so, to see you. Uh, yeah, great to see you. And great uh, presentation. Yeah, because my friend, a friend of mine, just shared the link with me, and I, I just saw your flyer. Um, I think it's good to catch up with you. Thank you. I think you should, you can, you can, you can have, you can host, you can join the next uh, presentation. You probably have some oh, research I can share with. Yeah. 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 But, but I'm not the engineer and I'm a, I'm still a researcher. So, um, yeah, but we, I don't, I, I think we, we don't, we are not limited limit to the industry job, but research job we can also can share with really good for other Probably for the new PH, PhD student, they probably need to determine which way they need to go. So probably they can compare from the industry and the research job. They can, yeah. Yeah, 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 true. yeah. yeah it's true. It, it's very, uh, I think, uh, like to see like uh, you're still uh, pursuing the job at uh, in civil engineering because I know a lot of friends of mine just uh, just to like data scientists. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah. still focus on civil engineering. I think that's a yeah. Oh, it's it's a good point. I I forgot to say. Uh, well, but right now, yeah, lots of my friends, they they work, they try to go to the data science, but it's very really competitive right now. So I, I don't know. But when I in the Vita, I feel like my co my coworker they probably uh older ten uh, like twenty years or thirty years than me. I feel like it's a huge generation gap. They don't have the young people to join the civil engineering. So, oh, I can take my friend as an example. She probably just same time with me, and uh, two consulting firms try to beat beat her to match their their salary. So, in the, so I so now I feel like the the traditional civil engineering job market is is I feel like it's pretty good right now. Yeah. So yeah, probably another option for for people want to stay here or try to looking for if they have the still not determine which way they want to go yeah so the civil engineer job market i feel like it's pretty good right now yeah but the pay is another another issue so it <laughs> depends on how, how you choose so. yeah it's true. It's true thanks for the presentation and i'll catch up with thank you, you later after the yeah sure uh, sure meeting. yeah thank you for joining us Okay, that's very sweet to see uh, you guys. Uh, we, are, we, are we are classmates, yeah, in the NCKU, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, we got another one question in the chat box. It's raised by uh, Oliver. Uh, the question is pretty big. Say, compared with Taiwan, what do you think the major difference about the, about the education and the working environment in the state? Oh, to be honest, uh, I, I won't say I have a really industry working, working experience in Taiwan. I have a one year uh, ser government service. This kind of like the military service, but I take another one. And uh, I, but I feel like, but I, I like the internship in the government in Taiwan, the Taiwan government job. So I feel like uh, the Taiwan government, the staff, they, tr they have to follow lots of uh, regulation, the rule, the, like, like, it seems like they need to manage a project. But uh, in the VDOT, uh, I feel like we have really actual engineer. We do the low rating to run the design program to analyze the capacity. We ha also have to review the uh, project, the report the calculation. We just like to 
had to check uh, what the output is incorrect of what your assumption is reasonably. So it's really practical engineer who has a in-house we do we say in-house design or in-house low rating. It's really right. similar with the the consulting firm. Yeah. And uh, you're talking about the education environment. Um uh, uh, environment uh, education it's, it's it's different because in United States uh, education you have to really um uh, how to say actively to to get a resource from but in Taiwan you passively receive a resource from your advisor your, your professor so it's it's kind of different so in, in United States if you don't ask you don't to uh, uh to lay up people know your request you're, you are ignored so to you have to really urgent to get what, what you need help and to find a resource by yourself yeah yeah i hope like i, I answer your question okay i raised my hand because i have two questions to you uh sure. i am also a bridge inspector <clears throat> so do you hold a certificate of training in United States for the bridge inspection? Oh, yeah, yeah. In the United States, we have the NHI, it's the National Highway Institute. Yeah, yes. They provide a two, two weeks safety inspection training. So, yeah, uh, my training is uh, in May. Yeah. So, once we get a two weeks two weeks training, we have to pass the the test to, to get a certificate. Yeah. And it's better so, to, to, to have this license, but it's not, it's not a required but it's better to get it yeah so you mean in this year yeah yeah two two months later yeah. okay i hold that in 2012 uh we got a training in taiwan the 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 trainee came to oh the trainer came to taiwan to uh hold the host the the uh training course that time okay another question is i met a people from uh video uh, virginia DLT. his name is rex pierce do you know him yeah He's, he's my boss, Rex Pierce. Okay, bring my picture to him. Okay, uh, all, all you, the you know, you know, you know, you know him. I uh, met him in twenty fifteen, uh, oh, in cool. the uh, international bridge conference. Oh, I will let him know. He's my big boss. <laughs> oh, he's a very very nice people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think KJ Lin uh is from Taiwan City. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, so if we. If Keisha wants to work in the United States, uh, so yeah, the master degree could be really quick, probably one or one and a half year. Then you can have a practical training, practical training. Then you can find a job and work for three years. And during three years, uh, employers should be uh, get a sponsor you to get an H one visa or a green card. So yeah, uh, I, I I would if you uh, if you uh, complete the money. PhD is not a, not a good option to help you to get a, to earn lots of money because to spend more time, but probably not just a little bit higher than the method student. But for PhD students, another you can you're you're thinking it's a philosophy. You have to think about your life and the, what you can do to improve current um, issues we face in the United States. Because oh, because, oh, I really appreciate uh, we have a I want to share. In 2021 or 22, I forget OTEA, United States organization, we have the uh, introduced the uh, uh, Biden's infrastructure bill to the Taiwan's uh, association. I forget. And I work with Sean. We take a look at the, the Biden's infrastructure bill related to the, the bridge. We found like in United States, the bridge is lots of lack of maintenance because of limited budget. It's a, it could be a really big issue here. So yeah, this around this project helped me to under to know much the current status of the bridge e bridge the issue we face in the United States. Yeah, it's a really good experience. Yeah. Oh, if I have time, can I just say thank you to lots of OTA the mentors here because they helped me to get a like Jaden that he shared his resource to help me to get a, a interview and uh uh when yeah I also got an interview chance from HDR and the uh, Jaden from the Acon and the uh, Sean Sean is also other night from the NCKU he told me a, a lot about the, the bridge what he had he's a, a really experienced uh engine bridge engineer so he shared a lot of what he thought and what he 
current work on. So it, it helped me a lot to understand yeah, in the bridge engineering, what it happens in the industry, not just in the research area. And uh, and uh, Vincent, yeah, Vincent, Vincent, he's he he's not here today, but Vincent invited me to join the OTEA. Yeah, and he's he's in New York. He also shared lots of experience with me. Yeah, that's, yeah. So it's many many help a lot of help from OTEA. So that's that's why I'm here today. And then I will I will keep on my say say hey, if I receive help from someone. So if I have a little bit of capability, I can help someone other else if they need a experience and share with them. So I think it's a really uh, positive um, relationship here to make our OTA become more and more stronger. Yeah. Uh, final question is, uh, I just wonder if DOT is a federal uh, government or I know there's oh. a, a oh. DOT. Um, I know that's a local it's government. A State it's government? A, yes, state government. Okay. And yes, different from the you probably call federal highway or US DOT is a federal label. For my under for my understanding, the federal label, the position probably needs to be US citizen. It's advanced than uh green card. So probably this is is higher requirement. Yeah. Hey yeah. Jadine. He raised hey, his hand. Hey, Jaden, thank yeah, you so no, much. No, I, just, I just, no problem. I still remember I, I, I uh, stay in your, uh, your apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just want to echo that. Uh, so for the federal job, you need to be a U.S. citizen. But for this, uh, you can, like, like Wang Yuan, you can just uh, work. Um, you, well, yeah, using H-1B or green card. Hey, Gongyuan, congratulations hey, for the, hey, for the new, new job. Yeah, sorry, I'm late. I was a, a talking without engineer at the beginning, <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, so that's my question too. So when I was graduate, I saw the DOT need to be green car. Does that, yeah, do you work in DOT use a H1B yes. or OPT? Uh, I start with OPT Okay. and they, they help me to apply the H1B. I know mm -hmm. lots of state DOT, they don't, they don't sponsor. But I, I probably it's, it seems like a inside information because we I live in the DC area. I just hey someone told me hey Vita can sponsor. Okay, okay. cool. Yeah, but so I mean I, I feel like it's not why we need the OTA here because we need to share the information probably because inside information. Yeah, each state has a different rule and each yeah, yeah. agency have a different yeah. rule. Even the public, someone really yeah. something. Uh, it's like if you you are not inside, you basically don't know their rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing that information. I think that will help a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So Vida is good option if you want. To, you need a sponsorship. Yeah. Probably a good a start. The beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay thanks, so, so uh, Gongyuan, we have another question in chat box. It's from Yuting Chen. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, I think the uh, question is how do you meet all the Taiwanese people in the United States? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, previous I shared the, the nonprofit organization here. It's not related to uh, engineer, uh, civil engineering. It's about a uh, uh, history research uh, team here. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, I helped land to do the some project here. It's a nonprofit, so the it is an important connection for me because the the mentor in the, this organization helped me to introduce me to the Vincent because they know in. New York, then Vincent invited me to join OTEA. So, you know, we never know the connection become us. As, so help people as, as possible you can. Someone, they sometimes they probably can return to you. Hey, I can introduce someone. I can help you. I can share some information or resource with you. So we, we never know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry for add one more thing. It's like, I don't know how, how many people know the Guangyuan's, uh, that's also a good organization. That's really, really cool organization they dig out all the history about the taiwanese they, they look from the congress library it's really cool if if going and you want to share again i think a lot of people will be interested <laughs> oh, he, he's contributed to the taiwan a lot like he's literally lovely country oh yeah thank, thank you Sean. yeah if you if yeah if i have time and okay have uh, the opening i can have another presentation with you and I do the uh, research on in the. It's not from the Congress. It's from the National Archive because I I study in Maryland, 
and National Archive in the United States, their uh, library is near, really close to the University of Maryland. So it's really convenient for me to, to help them to dig out some document uh, archive in the United States about Taiwan history. So because I am a civil engineering background, so I'm really interested in the, how Taiwan the infrastructure development since the Japanese period and uh, after World War II, how our infrastructure developed. Because I guess in Taiwan, probably follow the uh, US code a, li a little bit and some from the Japanese code. So it's a really interesting topic to help us to, to realize our our history, our past. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's very cool. Very, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Is any questions? <laughs> Hello, Jason. Hi, Guangyan. Uh, very good presentation, and thank you for sharing your experience with us. I have two questions for you. Uh, one, uh, because I didn't catch that part. Uh, when you are doing your job, uh, do they require you to get the PE qualification or not? Not necessary. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, I think it's, I will. I think it's a really good question. First, uh, for our uh, routine task, we have to stamp on the inspection report, the low rating summary sheet. We need a, a PE stamp on it. So for, for my current position, they really actually they need a PE engineer, but it's uh, hard to find a PE here. I guess it should be because I told, I said, it's, I feel like it's a big generation gap. So it's pretty hard to find a young profession engineer to, to fit this, this opening. So they lower their requirement to, hey, someone if I have EIT and they can, you can let them know, you probably can become a PE in two years or three years in the short term period. They say, okay, they can wait and they can train to help you to become a PE because PE the requirement of the qualification need for being a PE is to need a four to four years working experience. It depends on the, the state. So yeah, yeah. So I am required to become a PE in for this position, but it's not right now. So and yeah, and once you get a PE, you, you can get an uh, increase on the salary. So I will do that. Yeah, it's really important. Okay, so you joined this agency as a graduate student, right? Yes. Okay. So that's that was amazing because I think it's not easy uh, to find the your first job, <laughs> yeah, overseas. Oh yeah. Oh, I can <laughs> echo this question. So yeah. another, another thing I didn't mention is try to become uh the more diversity on your project because they find they review all my resume. They find okay, you have bridge engineer, bridge ready research project, but I have two uh, previous projects related to the science structure, traffic structure, signal pole structure analysis. This this is really rare. They say, hey, hey these, these guys know the signal pole, how to maintain them, and they have, he has uh, experience on that. Okay, give him the chance to to, to interview. So that's what like they told, told me. Yeah, so I, I didn't know that. So hey, science structure, traffic signal pole, traffic structure is not pretty cool, like the super, Huge bridge or the uh, high rise building. So, but it, I feel I still feel like it's probably not pretty cool. But I, I I never know he will help me to get a chance to get an interview. Yeah. So diversity is really important to help help me to get a chance to for interview. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answer. Another question is, uh, for general government agency in the United States, uh, you will have in house specialist. Uh, like a bridge engineer, or usually uh, the government will engage consultant to do uh, those technical design and yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So why? Yeah, I just wondering why uh, you have in-house uh, uh, in our in-house uh, structure or bridge engineer, and why don't you uh, just engage a consultant to do that job? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I I never know the. DOT has an in-house in inspection or design service. So yeah, but I, I feel like it depends on the state. It also depends on the district. So 
some states that have lots of funding, they probably their, their policy led them to consulting out their project to the all of bridge inspection or design to the consulting firm. I know Marin DOT they, they do that. So they, they have not, much, not many the in-house engineer. But for the Virginia in our district, we have we uh we do a lot of in-house design, inspection and low rating. So I, I don't know why the policy so but yeah. But I, I know it's uh, depends on which state or across which district or agency they're funding from and the policy. Yeah. So how many engineers in your team or in your office? For my for my team, inspection team, we have uh two low rating in engineer, but one is my co-worker or mentor, he's retired but come back to as part-time. So we have only have two low rating engineer. We have another two inspection engineer there focus on management, managing the the the, the inspection schedule and the budget yeah but for in the okay, design, the de in design yeah. room they have a lot of uh, engineers they are working on the design in-house design yeah okay thank you so much uh i see sean yeah sean raise a hand uh i ate something about why the dot have uh in-house design capacity so th this is a little bit of history and uh, i think the best uh, what i learned uh the the, the, the best experience have a have in-house design and have consulting is Washington State. And I mean Jay knows that the, the Washington State DOT uh, director the end become the FHWA director and he's very close to Taiwan. And he promoted to the FHWA director because this 50%, 50% in-house design and in-house uh uh the like consulting the pattern. And just to remember why they need the in-house capacity because uh, the DOT is still the older bridge owner and anything public have uh, some issue, they will go to the DOT. So keep some capacity in their in-house is really important because they, they are the end of end user and then end owner. And this is uh, something that California do long time ago. California don't really do bridge design to the consulting until probably 10, 15 years ago. And still California DOT, the management, manage and the uh, uh, control a lot of design. Even you are the consulting, you design the bridge for the California. You need to be reviewed by the DOT uh, comprehensively. You need to meet all their requirements because they are the end user, they are the end owner, and their management is bridge. So for the big state, they have, if they have money, they tend to have their capacity. Uh, unless some small state, like they, they don't have that capacity, they will uh, outsourcing to the, the consulting. But that's, that's basically some history about how the DOT why they want design. And I actually think the Taiwan DOT should have uh, some of this capacity to do something like this. Or how do you review and how do you know the consulting design is good or bad? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all this, this chance sharing.